Good morning, Structure and Powers. Yan po ang topic ng Federalism Press Briefing today. Let's now have Assistant Secretary Marie Banag. Thank you, Rocky. Magandang umaga po sa ating uh, kasamahan sa media for the, sa Malacanang Press Corps po. This morning, we have with us a member of the CONCOM, Attorney Juan Libarios and of course, Secretary Gary Olivar. Um, Attorney Libarios will be presenting yung uh, structure and powers ng proposed drafts ng CONCOM uh, po on federalism. Sir. But before uh, we jump to Attorney Rowan, let me indulge in the privilege of uh, introducing him properly based on my CV, which was sent to me by Viber. Uh, Attorney Rowan de Barrios, um, is a founding partner of uh, Libra Law, uh, and formerly a president, national president of the Integrated Bar of the Philippines, uh, a UP graduate through and through undergrad and uh, college of law. Uh, he was a former congressman and vice governor of uh, Gusan del Norte. Uh, and as uh, Asik uh, Marie said, he is a uh, member of the consultative committee for the review of the uh, 1987 constitution. Uh, today is going to be talking to us about uh, governmental, uh, governmental powers under the uh, New federally set up. Uh, thank you for joining us, Attorney. Okay. Uh, salamat din kay uh, Secretary Gary Olivar, kay uh, Asek Marie. Uh, sa ating lahat, uh, magandang umaga. Uh, I was assigned to uh, uh, present an overview of the structure and powers of the proposed uh, federal setup as being advocated to by the CONCOM. So, uh, at the onset, uh, we would like to uh, uh, clarify the operating uh, principle of the federalism. That is, that federalism is the highest form of decentralization. That is the operating principle of our proposed uh, revision of the Constitution. Now, if federalism is the solution, what then is the problem? Now, based on our analysis, uh, the key problems that we are facing is the serious imbalance in economic development among regions, and number two, an over-concentration of economic resources and power in the center because we are operating on a unitary form government na yung central government is in Metro Manila. And so there's a tendency of over-concentration of economic resources and power in the center and resulting in the serious imbalance of economic development among the various regions. And we have, here we have the highlights of uh, the imbalance and over-concentration. In terms of GDP, the gross domestic product, based on statistics, NCR, which is the seat of the national government, and Calabarzon, which forms part of the Mega Manila, practically accounts for 53% of the gross domestic product. While the rest of the other regions, uh, 16 regions, could only account for 47%. So the overwhelming uh, bulk of the GDP is being uh, accounted for only by Calabar Zone and uh, Metro Manila or the NCR. Now, in terms of poverty incidence, uh, maliwanag din dito yung uh, ang, uh, ang uh, nag improve lang in terms of uh, poverty eradication, Metro Manila and Calabar Zone, 10% uh, yung poverty incidence, but the rest of the country uh, other regions, so market pa rin from 20 to 51 percent. Kaya nga sabi nila, uh, although nag improve yung uh, natin, yung uh, growth rate natin sa Pilipinas compared with other countries, but still we are lagging behind in terms of poverty eradication because many of our regions are still suffering from high poverty incidence, except only for Metro Manila and Calabarzon. Dito may mark improvement sa ating uh, poverty incidence. Uh, eradication. Now, in terms of direct investments, uh, based again on statistics, lumalabas na more than 50% of direct investments are again accounted for by the NCR and Calabar Zone. And in terms of uh, budget, uh, lalo na sa, sa DOTR natin, may example lang namin, uh, in, from 2013 to 2016, Calabar Zone and NCR both account for 53% of the budget of the DOTR. Uh, showing the over-concentration of resources in, uh, in Metro Manila and uh, the Calabar Zone area, which is also, which forms part of the Mega Manila, yung Calabar Zone. 
So here we have a picture of gross imbalance of economic resources and economic development. And so we are proposing for a shift to check the imbalance. No? So we are, we are proposing for spreading out of economic development. And uh, the way to spread out economic development is by enhancement of just and equitable shared economic resources. And then we have a devolution of powers to the regions in order to check the economic imbalance of development among the regions. So we're proposing for a shift from principally unitary setup to a federal setup of government. So one from one centralized government to a two-tier form government, we have federal and at the same time regional states no? or regional governments. So essentially we will have in our proposal all existing regions will now be considered as political subdivisions with regional governments. So 16 regions, which include the Negros uh, region, integrated region, and you have the two asymmetrical regions, which are uh, the, the uh, Bangsamoro and the Cordillera. Uh, we consider these two regions as asymmetrical uh, because of uh, recognition of cultural differences and ethnic differences and historical differences. So we're giving them more powers than the other regions. More powers, more recognition of uh, flexibility. Uh, they'll be entitled to separate organic acts. So much uh, may freedom, much may self-rule uh, compared with other regions. So dito, uh, if you notice under the existing constitution natin, meron tayong uh, tinatawag na local government code but if you notice in our local government code, walang recognition sa regional government. And yet, if you notice also, lahat ng ating regions, meron tayo mga regional line agencies. But all of these regional line agencies are actually under the control of the national government. Walang say doon ang ating mga regions. We have the Regional Development Council, essentially a debating society, kasi wala rin siyang self-rule, walang governance. So now we are trying to shift it will create a regional government at lahat ng mga regional line agencies will now be forming part of the regional government and may self-rule na ito. In other words, may recognition that they're capable now of making laws governing their own respective territories. And uh, may authority na rin sila over the devolved regional line agencies and supervision over the LGUs. So in other words, uh, under the constitution natin, hindi tayo pwede mag-create ng regional government because that is not recognized under the Constitution except only for Bangsamoro and Cordillera. So for us to shift towards federalism, we need to amend the Constitution because uh, it is uh, the present Constitution is incapable of recognizing regional governments because ang political subdivision lang natin dito, uh, municipalities, cities, and provinces, walang recognition sa regional government except only for Bangsamoro and Cordillera. So we're trying to shift towards federalism by amending the Constitution. Now, dito, may kita mo, so shifting of powers ito, decentralization, ang federalism. So here, we, we, there is now a delimitation of the exclusive powers of the national government or the federal government. So dito, may, meron tayo naka-identify ng mga powers of the uh, federal government or the national government for that matter. So yung defense and security, foreign affairs, international trade, customs and tariffs, all of this would still be retained by the national government or the federal government in recognition of promoting uh, national stability at uh, uh, national security and economic development on a national scale also. But other powers will now be devolved to the regional government. So the next slide will show that economic powers now will be devolved to the regional governments. Now, for example, socio-economic development and planning. Uh, ngayon, lahat ng mga major projects dadaan pa sa approval sa NEDA, but this time, under the federalism, ang mag decide dito regional governments na. Now, uh, yung mga, for example, economic zones right now, kung mag apply yung isang province na economic zone, dadaan pa sa Office of the President, approval ng presidential proclamation, PESA natin, but under the proposed setup ngayon, this will now be tackled by the region. Uh, ganon din sa mga tourism development natin, mga major projects, big ticket projects, dumadaan pa rin sa approval sa, sa national line agencies, national government, but under the new setup, this will not be devolved. So we expect a more, uh, expect a faster uh, and uh, more efficient 
uh, unlocking of potentials of the region, economic development. So here, because we are giving them more, more uh, authority, we expect to unlock the economic potentials for development of the regions. So creation of source of revenue and uh, financial administration, all of this now will be handled by the regional governments and no longer by the national government. And this will be considered exclusive powers of the national, of the regional governments. So then we have the other devolved exclusive powers, yan. exclusive yan ng ating mga regional governments like land use and housing, hindi na kailangan pa ng national involvement yan. This will now be tackled by the regions. Mga permitting, uh, business permitting, lahat yan. Mga uh, uh, control over or the supervision, regulation of municipal waters, IP rights and welfare, sports development, parks, everything now will be decided by the regional government. These economic powers, this will now be considered as exclusive powers of the regional government. In other words, we're giving them more autonomy in terms of defining their economic development. Uh, with the exception of the powers retained to the national government, this list of powers will now be devolved to the regional government, giving them more leeway in defining and charting their own economic development with the hope of, because of this, we will now be able to unlock the economic potentials of the various regions. Now, uh, in terms of taxing powers, sinasabi natin masyadong over-concentrated yung wealth sa national government, sa, uh, sa Metro Manila and the Calabarzon area. So here we have shift, no major shift in terms of taxing powers. Uh, federal government will uh, be limited only to income tax, customs duties, VAT, an excise tax, uh, and except and uh, except those granted now to the federated regions. So the federated regions now will be exercising taxing powers over the estate tax, donors tax, professional tax, and all the other list of taxes, which will now be devolved and under the taxing jurisdiction of the region. So the the authority to levy and collect taxes of this nature will now be shifted to the regional government, giving the regional government more authority to raise their own revenues and no longer uh, maparang completely dependent on the national government. So we're giving them more leeway now to, to raise their own revenues, yung ating mga regional uh, governments, by defining the taxes that they can now impose. These taxes, some of these are still being imposed now by the national government, being collected and levied by the national government. But this time, under the federal setup, this will now be distributed to the uh, regional governments. So we're hoping to uh, promote uh, autonomy in terms of raising of revenues and uh, for the regional governments. And then there is also an allocation for greater sharing of funds. Uh, between the federal government and the national government. Uh, so national taxes, if you notice under the local government code and based on practice, meron tayong sharing. 60% goes to national, 40% goes to the LGU. At yung napupunta lang sa LGU, yun yung national taxes lang, income taxes lang. Uh, ngayon, sa proposal natin, 50% ng mga national taxes na nakolekta uh, dapat share yan sa regions and the LGU. So from 40 to 50 percent, and then all taxes na, hindi lang limited sa income taxes. So yung mga customs duties, VAT, excise taxes, may share ng ating mga regional government and LGUs. So mas equitable sharing of uh, income. Kasi nag reklamo yung ating mga LGUs, like in Cebu for example, you're hosting the Mactan Airport, pero lahat ng income mapunta lang sa customs duties, mapunta lang sa national government. So here, we're making sure na 50% of that income will be shared by the regional governments. In terms of exploration, development, and use of natural resources, in ensure din natin ang 50% ng net revenues derived from federated regions should go now to the regions. Ang, ang except, for example, sa Cordillera, they will be getting 75%. So in other words, may, may assurance na ngayon ng mga regions natin na nag-host sila ng mga mining companies doon, nag-host sila ng mga, uh, na mga, let's say, for example, mga power plants, they will be getting at least 50% of the net revenues, yung ating mga uh, regional governments. 
And then to ensure na meron naman tayong uh, balance in terms of uh, development sa ating regions, we're also uh, allocating 3% of the GAA to serve as equalization fund uh, para ito magiging basihan din kung anong region na kailangan ng tulong. So yung, yung equalization fund will uh, serve as a buffer fund. And this will be allocated to regions uh, needing uh, assistance para mag-fast track yung kanilang development. So we're allocating... 3% uh, of the GAA of the appropriations uh, annually for the equalization fund. And this will be managed by, uh, the, by, a, by a commission para matulungan yung ibang regions. And of course, the national budget, kasi kasama pa rin natin yung mga, yung mga congressmen pa rin, can still allocate uh, uh, pro programs and services for the regions. So, may kun meron pa rin pwedeng pagkukuhanan yung ating mga regional uh, governments. No? So, in other words, dito ngayon, meron na tayong uh, equitable sharing of uh, uh, resources. No? Taxes, uh, income from natural resources, and from the GAOs, from the GAO also. So, to ensure that we will have a more equitable sharing of equitable development and spreading out of economic development among regions. So, these are, these are the mechanisms that we have adopted to ensure that we will have a spreading out of economic development among the various regions. Now, for uh, on the structure side, we have adopted a uh, presidential federal system of government pattern after the U.S. Not, uh, hindi ito president, hindi ito federal na parliamentary. Uh, doon sa commission namin, nag nanalo yung presidential pa rin tayo na federal. So, we will the, the executive power will still be lodged in the president. But this time, may, 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 meron tayong changes dito, na yung president will now be elected, uh, the president and the vice president will now be elected as a team. Hindi pwede yung president yung binoto mo, iba yung vice president. Kasi nga sabi natin, kailangan natin ng mas cohesive na team for implementation, policy making, so, just like in other countries, a vote for the president should be a vote for the vice president. Uh, and then, sa so changes natin, nagkaroon ng uh, the president, the vice president, uh, four years na lang, four years, not six years, but with one re-election. So, and then, uh, may requirement tayo ngayon na college degree holder siya or is equivalent to ensure na yung professional competence ng ating mga leaders. And then, we also inserted here para to avoid yung mga issues uh, uh, that would uh, provide for political agenda daw. In the CONCOM draft, mm -hmm. the incumbent president is barred from running either as transition or regular president. That is included in the CONCOM draft to avoid any insinuation na may mga political hidden agenda dito sa draft na to. So we inserted that and it, uh, the incumbent president is barred from running as transition or regular uh, president in the federal setup. Now, another major change in the structure is in the judiciary. Napakalaking uh, pagbabago sa ating judiciary dito uh, because ang problema nga sa judiciary natin, sinasabi natin napakabagal ng decision making, especially sa Korte Suprema kasi we, we only have one Supreme Court no? deciding all appeal cases. So, ang tinignan namin dito ngayon, we pattern it from uh, France and Germany, may mga models din kasi doon kung bakit efficient yung kanilang justice system. So, we decided na from one Supreme Court deciding all cases, we will have four high courts. Yung Federal Supreme Court will be deciding mga civil and criminal cases, regular courts natin, and other jurisdictions. So, andiyan pa rin Korte Suprema. But all constitutional questions now will now be resolved not by the Supreme Court but by the Federal Constitutional Court just like in France and in Germany na yung constitutional questions no longer go to the Supreme Court kasi overburdened na ang Korte Suprema. So this will be tackled now by a constitutional court to be composed of experts on constitutional matters to ensure more efficient and more uh, effective no? uh, disposition of constitutional questions. And then, lahat ng mga quasi-judicial bodies, yung COA natin, Ombudsman, uh, COMELEC, ngayon, ang appeal, pupunta pa sa Korte Suprema, uh, pati yung mga LTF, RB, lahat. But we have decided that if, kung itong lahat ng mga quasi-judicial agencies, quasi-judicial bodies, 
lahat ng mga review pupunta pa sa Supreme Court na ang Supreme Court will still be overburdened at tumatagal yung disposal of cases. So we decided na magkakaroon tayo ng federal admin court with exclusive jurisdiction over quasi-judicial uh, review processes. So and then lastly, we have the federal electoral court Sa ating sistema ngayon, fragmented yung ating uh, decision sa electoral cases. Kasi pag, pag uh, election-related uh, uh, contest sa congressmen, HRET tayo. Pag, uh, pag Senado naman, meron tayong Senate Electoral Tribunal. Pag Presidente, meron tayong Presidential Electoral Tribunal. At pag other offices, meron tayong COMELEC. E yung COMELEC ka natin, nababurden na masyado. Kasi instead na mag-implement sila ng election laws, na ubus yung oras nila sa pagkasetol ng mga election contests. So what we decided is that uh, the quasi-judicial quasi -judicial functions of the COMELEC will be divested na. It will now be devolved or transferred to the electoral court. At yung lahat ng mga korte natin dito sa HRET, SET, the PET, will now be consolidated under one house, which is now the Federal Electoral Court. And the decisions of the federal court will now be considered as final and non-appealable. So this will ensure a more rationalized uh, procedure in resolving uh, election cases. Kasi ngayon, uh, fragmented eh. Iba-ibang ano, iba uh, pag sa House, ibang electoral court, Senado iba, pag Presidente iba naman, pag sa ibang officials iba. Now we have decided to, to bring them in under one house and to ensure more efficient and uh, more effective adjudication of electoral cases. At yung COMELEC natin, isang trabaho na lang sila. Efficient implementation na lang, enforcement of election laws. Wala na silang quasi-judicial function. So para makafocus sila sa ensuring clean, honest elections rather than being bogged down by electoral contests. So ipapasok na natin yan sa electoral court. Now dito, we're also proposing a more independent justice system. No? So here, sa practice natin ngayon, yung mga appointments to the High Court, like Supreme Court, exclusive yan sa Presidente. Sa proposal namin, ginawa namin one-third coming up to be appointed by the President, one-third to be appointed by Congress, and one-third to be appointed by the Judiciary to ensure a more balanced composition of the Supreme Court and the other High Courts. Now, sa mga lower courts naman, Ngayon, ang practice natin is ang nag-appoint presidente. But in other jurisdictions, ang nag-appoint ang Supreme Court. Eh. Because ang Supreme Court is more supposed to be uh, more uh, familiar sa mga members ng bench. So we're giving that to the Supreme Court. Parang sa Congress, nag-appoint yan mga speaker sa entire house, ang speaker mismo. So pag sa judiciary din, bibigay natin sa Supreme Court except sa mga high courts because ang president natin will be given the one-third pa rin na authority. And then we have from JBC, we have the judge C ngayon. This will now be the judiciary uh, appointments and disciplinary council. We're expa we have expanded the powers of the judicial and bar council. Meron na silang mandate ngayon to conduct search at may mandate na mag-conduct ng investigation. So strengthening of the, of the powers of the JBC to ensure that we will have a more competent and the more uh, efficient and uh, members of the bench na mas may integrity at uh, mas makatulong no, sa pagpapalakas ng ating hudikatura. So we're strengthening the JBC at two are to become a judge now. Now in terms uh, of sa Congress naman natin, we're still operating an, on a bicameral Congress. No? May Senado pa rin tayo at meron pa rin tayong uh, Kongreso. Ang kaibahan lang, kasi ngayon, ang Senado natin, in-elect nationally. So, nangyayari, maraming regions natin, walang uh, mga senador, walang representation. Uh, Nagireklamo yung mga Muslim, not brothers natin, ang tagal-tagal na wala silang naging representative. Even mga katakordelyera, walang representative sa Senado. So, napaka-imbalance pa rin, no, ang representation. Now, to make sure na lahat ng regions meron talagang representative sa Senado, so we made sure that each region kailangan may dalawa silang senador, regardless of the size of the region. So, regardless of the size of the region, malaki ang region mo, malit ang region mo, you will be entitled to two senators. So, we will have each region, kasi meron tayong 18 regions, existing regions yan, plus yung asymmetric regions natin, 
each of the regions now will be entitled to have two senators. So regardless of the size. So that will ensure more equal representation among the regions sa Senate. And in four-year term siya at saka yung uh, with one re-election. Sa House naman, may pagkakaiba tayo ngayon dito. Kasi basically we're operating in the 80% sa House natin ngayon, yung membership uh, voted by the electoral uh, districts, yung one member congressman per district and then 20% sa party list. So, yung sa party list natin, uh, medyo splintered yan kasi may cap eh. Uh, tatlong ano lang, tatlo lang pinaka-maximum. So, hindi talaga, walang opportunity to develop a strong party system. A strong party system. So, we're looking at, uh, ang tinitingnan ng uh, ating uh, uh, CONCOM, eh, mapalakas yung party system natin. Kasi nga sinasabi nila, yung ating uh, uh, politika sa Pilipinas, napaka-personality-oriented, na talagang halos walang party system na nabuo strong party system. So we're shifting towards 40% proportional party representation. The regular parties actually can uh, participate dito and then wala nang cap. So if the party is strong enough, para yung mga parties will, will really will really ensure na lumakas sila kasi the more they get votes, the more they're entitled to additional seats in proportion to their performance in the electoral process. So there will now be an incentive for parties to grow and strengthen themselves. And magkaroon tayo ng one, two, three, or four strong parties rather than splintered party lists. No? But to ensure naman na uh, yung ating mga marginal sectors will still be represented. So in the first three electoral cycles, yung ating limang marginal sectors are assured of equal number of seats, 50%, doon sa ating party representation. So, labor, peasant, fisher fox, uh, urban poor, and then the IPs will be entitled to mandatory uh, seats in the first three electoral cycles. And we're hoping that after the three electoral cycles, they will be strong enough now to compete and uh, develop with coalitions to strengthen our party system. Kasi nakikita natin, kailangan natin yung strengthening of the political party system. That's why we're shifting towards 20% party list to 40% uh, uh, proportional party representation with assurance in the first electoral cycles merong mandatory seats for the marginalized sectors to ensure na hindi naman kaagad mapektuhan yung ating marginal sectors. So ito yung uh, changes natin sa, sa legislative department by cameral pa rin siya. Pero ito yung changes natin. No? So all the rest naman, basically, uh, na-retain naman natin yung ano, yung, although may mga pagbabago tayo mga kinait na commission, like uh, competition commission natin, ginawa natin constitution na, constitutional body na to ensure na merong fair play talaga at wala yung maabuso na sa, sa, ano, sa market natin, structures natin. So that's a uh, in essence, ito, ito yung uh, pinapropose natin na uh, federal structure under the new constitution. Magandang uh, umaga po. Secretary Olivar, do you have a statement? Oh, I'm, I'm fine. I'm, okay. I agree 100% with Attorney Ross. <laughs> okay, MPC questions. Pia Gutierrez. Hi, sir. Good morning. Hi, Pia. Uh, sir, yung pagdating dun sa provision, sir, that the incumbent president, meaning President Duterte, <laughs> is uh, already barred from running as transition or regular president. Does it also apply to Vice President Lenny Robredo? No, he can, she can run as president. Okay. Uh, so, clear, sir, that she can run under, uh, under a transition government, sir. Yes. But she needs to run, sir. It's not automatic that... Yeah, she needs to run. She needs to run. But on, uh, the, only the incumbent president is barred from running as president. Sir, I understand that this provision was requested by President Duterte to the CONCOM. Tama po ba? Yes, kasi nung una kasi may mga insinuations that yung CONCOM e kinreate to perpetuate himself in power. Eh, sabi naman ni Presidente, matanda na ako eh. Uh, gusto ko na i-clear yan, issue na yan. I don't want na matainted yung output ng CONCOM with the insinuations na may sarili akong agenda dito. So baka gusto nyo yung uh, ilagay niya na clear cut terms yung uh, prohibition. So that was part of our discussion also. 
Sir, I'm curious lang, did the President request to the CONCOM to include uh, the position of the Vice President dun sa, sa provision na yun, sir? Kasi I understand, kasi naalala ko dati, sir, na he said na yun din yung isa suggest niya because he has uh, apprehensions over the uh, uh, the leadership of Vice President Lenny Robredo. Bakit hindi, sir, nakasama, sir, yung si VP doon sa provision na yun, sir? Kasi mukha naman, ano, eh, from our position din, uh, an incumbent vice president, mahirap naman i-bar mo from running as president sa transition. So we decided naman in the interest of fairness, di ba? So ang ababar lang kasi yung, yung presidente to avoid potential uh, sinasabi ng loaded ka masyado, presidente ka eh. And then you run for president also. Di ba? Tsaka sa ating konstitusyon, meron naman talagang one term lang ang presidente, six years lang eh. Ang Vice President, one term. But so, si Vice President Robredo cannot run as Vice President. He can only, she can only run as President. Or oh. other, other position. But not as Vice President. And also, sir, why the uh, decision of the CONCOM to limit the term of the President to only four years? No, actually, with one re-election. With one re-election. Kasi ang unang, ang sabi nga nilang, six years... Uh, pag uh, masyadong, kung magal, magaling naman presidente naman, pwede natin bigyan, bigyan ng eight years, di ba? So, kung masamang presidente, di gawin natin four years lang, may re-election siya. Uh, pag magaling siya, di entitled siya sa eight years. So, kung, kung six years kasi, sabi na, masyadong masikip din yan, eh. Lalo din sa mga programs natin, eh. So, pag yung presidente talaga, may drive naman siya, and uh, uh, tingin naman ng taong bayan, eh, maayos naman yung pagkapatakbo niya, din entitled siya to, to one re-election. So, it, total of eight years. Yes, sir. Kasi there, there were observations na parang ang six years nga is not enough for a president to implement parang long-term policies. Mm -hmm. What if the president, the incumbent president, is a good leader but not strong politically? Eh nga, ang sabi namin, four years plus four years. Kesa sa ngayon, six years lang ang maximum, di ba? So, we're giving the president <coughs> four years plus four years. Now, kay... Kay uh, Presidente naman, may six-year terms ang ating uh, six-year term ang ating Presidente. But uh, sabi niya, kung magkakaroon na ng federalismo, sabi niya, na, na pasa na yan, na tanggap ng taong bayan, then I'm willing, sabi niya, to, uh, to step down and have a transition President. It's really an option offered also by the President. Ang sabi niya kasi, parang uh, ayaw niya mabahiran daw yung uh, output ng CONCOM ng mga lumalabas kasi nung una yung mga political insinuations na may sariling agenda ang federalismo na i-perpetuate in power yung ating incumbent president. So, in our discussion, uh, he was so open to the idea na i-bar na siya. And he said so directly actually. Thank you, sir. Okay, question? Ian? Ian Cruz? Hello po. Sir, yeah. good morning. Uh, Last night, nagsalita si Presidente about his health. Hindi ba threatened ang CONCOM na, syempre, si Presidente ang nag-spearhead ng federalism and what if uh, mayroon talaga siyang karamdaman, paano po ito? Syempre, pag, uh, pag health ng Presidente, lahat concerned, di ba? But tingin naman naman, hindi naman critical yet ang health ng ating Presidente. No? Uh, but uh, we also have constitutional processes to observe in that eventuality. Pero tingin namin, malakas pa presidente natin eh. So, yung walang serious concern about the health of the president. Sir, nabanggit natin lahat ng mga branches, ano, pero yung mga LGU, magiging four-year term na rin ba sila? Uh, Ganon din. The same. Four-year term ang LG with one re-election. Kasi matingin namin, yung three years, masyadong maigsi. Napakahirap kakandidato ka pa, kangampanya ka after one year, kangampanya ka naman ulit. So, napaka-sikip nung three years. So, we decided four years with uh, one re-election. Sa current, sir, di ba three consecutive terms yeah. pwede sila? Uh -huh. So, hindi na sila pwede mag nine years, eight hindi years na. lang. Eight years lang. What about yung barangay, sir? Mariretain ba? Ah, ganun pa rin ang barangay. It will be subject to law naman yung barangay. Uh -huh. Okay, question? So, Pia. Sir, in the latest survey, lumabas na yung change in the Constitution is the least of the uh, the people's concerns. Um, kung ikukumpara mo dun sa concerns nila on inflation and unemployment, does it affect the government's or the administration's push for federalism? 
Siguro ano yan, uh, parang uh, eye-opener yan. Tsaka hindi talaga maiwasan kasi malayo sa tiyan eh. Di ba? Yung siyempre ang tao mas concerned sa presyo, um, sa ibang mga uh, mga bilihin, ganyan. Di ba? Other concerns, employment, etc. At uh, yung abstract kasi itong federalism eh, sa kanila eh. So medyo malayo. Pero ngayon, nagkakaroon naman ng pagkakaintindihan yung DILG and other executive uh, branches ng ating mga agencies no? na mag na ikakampanya natin to para maintindihan ng taong bayan yung benefits ng federalism. So this is a wake up call and yung lahat naman nagkakasundo no. Ah uh, tinamaan si Asik, ito naman yung isa sa mga campaigners natin. Ito rin si Secretary Olivar. We will be campaigning to our people para maintindihan nila yung federalismo. Meron lang ako sa dugtong na diyan sa tanong niya no na ni Ma'am over there. Um uh, Well, tanggap naman po natin na talagang ika nga mal, ano, malap, malap, malapit sa tiyan yung, ano, yung issue ng inflation and prices. Kaya yun ang kasalukuyang you know, namamayani sa pag-iisip ng tao at lumalabas po ito sa latest surveys, lalo na yung survey ng uh, PALS nung, ano, ng, ng September 1 to 15 at saka yung latest tungkol sa net gainers, optimist versus pessimist ng, ano, ano, ng SWS. Siyempre, ang, ang inflation sa ka-prices, talagang malaking issue sa mga mamayan. Pero wag din natin kalilimutan na federalism also offers a solution you know, to this problem. Generally speaking, I, I, well, there are three areas of concern sa inflation. One is factors that are outside your control. Di mga control. Ano ba po yung pagtaas ng presyo ng langis sa ibang bayan o kaya yung pagbagsak ng piso kaya nagmamahal yung mga imports. Now, those things... Uh, they're uncontrollable, therefore, so by definition, they're irrelevant sa issue ng federalism versus unitary. May mga ano naman, causes of inflation na ikangay demand pool, no? Uh, yung, alam ba, masyadong maraming pera sistema. And that is best managed, obviously, at the national level, uh, and in recognition of which, under the new constitution, monetary policy and the bank of strength will remain a cent central mechanism no? sa federal level. But ang nakikita po natin inflation ngayon, the third kind is, uh, sabi na rin mismo ng BSP at ng may ibang nasa pamalaan, yung pong tinatawag nating ano, cost push o supply side, tumataas po ang presyo ng production at distribution ng mga importanteng bilhin, lalo na lang ba yung agricultural commodities, especially rice. Okay? So, issue po ng supply side inflation, ma malaki magagawa ng federalism in several ways. Number one, Uh, pagdating po sa agricultural production, mas nababantayan ng regional government ang mga programa, mas, natutu mas naitutulak yung mga programa na magtataas na productivity, alibawa yung pagpapatayo ng mga infrastructure, okay, na kailangan mga farm-to-market roads, mga irrigation systems, mas nabibigyan po na attention yun at the regional level. And this is recognized uh, basically in global federalist practice. Okay. Number two, mas nababantayan po yung ano, no, yung uh, yung yung problema kasi sa distribution sa logistics na no? paglabas po ng farm gate ang laki po ng pinapatong ng ano ng mga traders ng mga middlemen nagkakaroon po ng mga cartel nagkakaroon ng hoarding mas nababantayan yun again at the regional level kasi mas malapit yung gobyerno yung governor regional governor at regional assembly uh, sa pinagmumula ng problema they can watch it more easily kasi they are close to the ground okay? they don't have to decide about allocating resources across the national scale no kung anong resources nila sa loob ng region, yun po may, may tuto nila kagad sa problema ng ganong klaseng catalyzed behavior, inefficiency, monopoly, etc., hoarding, etc. So to the extent the regional governments are more responsive to uh, supply-side factors behind inflation, makakatulong po ang federalism sa pagpapababa na inflation. Okay. Sa kasalukuyan nga, babanggit ko na rin na bumababa na raw yung inflation dito po sa kamay nila, which is where I think it is the highest. So, this is an aside. Uh, yung sinabi po ng ating mga economic managers na, na temporary phenomenon lang, phenomenon lang ito, itong inflation, nagsisimula na po mangyari ito. At unti-unti na pong hum, ano, bumababa ang inflation rate na at least starting sa Metro Manila. Okay, thank you. Secretary Olivar, question? No more? Yeah, sige, Pia. Hey, Secretary Oliver, obviously, sir, the taong bayan, kailangan ng ganyang klase na explanation mm. para mas mapalapit sa sigmura mm. yung uh, pagkakaintindi ng taong bayan mm. sa federalism. Are we changing our strategies po, especially in our uh, campaigns, uh, public information campaigns, para maiba yung, or at least to, to tweak our explanations 
in our campaigns. So we, we have a standard, uh, obviously, the, 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 uh, the ideas we're projecting na ginawa po ng ating consultative committee, yun po ay pare-pareho wherever we go, no? when we go on these regional sorties. Pero ang isa pong bahagi ng format natin kapag lumalabas po tayo sa mga region, ay yun pong tinatawag na town hall. No? We have a town hall, we meet with uh, representatives of local groups no? uh, with issues, no? whether they're fisher folk, urban poor, workers, mga estudyante, at iniugnay po natin sa kanilang mga issue mga ginagawa natin pagsulo ng federalismo. We are already doing that. Okay, so itong pagtungtong natin sa, sa issue ng inflation ngayon ang ginawa natin sa press, press briefing, ginagawa na po natin sa mga region. Kaya nga po, mapapan, napapansin namin at kung sumama po kayo sa amin, mapapansin din nyo na kapag narinig na po kami ng mga ano, no, na mga nasa probinsya, nasa region, ay big katangkap-tangkap po kaagad sa kanila ang sinasabi namin. Sapagkat sila po ang unang-una nakakaranas na pagpapabaya sa kanila ng central government. Okay, thank you, Pia. Thank you, Secretary Olivar. Thank you, Attorney Libarios. Thank you, Assistant Secretary Marie Banaag. Back to our studio sa Radio Pilipinas and People's Television Network.